It's another faultless display from Beauty Generation, Hong Kong's champion, Beauty Generation. A wonderful endeavour to win eight in a row and break so many records. The gates are open and they're off. The City Hong Kong Gold Cup. Exultant wins again. What a season he's having. Tactics, tactics, tactics. Zach Person is the maestro yet again. Exultant, brilliant, wins by a length. What a remarkable season it's been. Another incredible racing story and a coveted crowd in glory. How good was that? Well, Zach, here we are at the 2400 metre start. Just talk us through the journey you'd take from here. Well, it's, uh, it's a 500 metre start. You know, it's a bit of a tricky start because you, you think you get a long run to the first corner, which is at the winning post. But in actual fact, it comes up quicker than what you think it does. So if you're drawn wide, you can get caught into a trap of actually having to overuse your horse um, to the winning post to get that position. You go around the first corner, all the way down the back straight, and then you come past here to where we started. And obviously, hopefully by here, you're out in the clear. You've had the right run, the right tempo, and it's time to let your horse loose and let him do his thing. Exultant and Lee's Grasher, a real cliffhanger in the bars. Exultant fights back and wins for Hong Kong. I rode my first winner in May of 2000 in um, Armidale, which is a country area of New South Wales. Uh, and then I started riding all the way up and down the north coast of New South Wales and southeast Queensland, all the way from the Sunshine Coast down to Newcastle and Sydney. I was clocking up 150,000 k's a year in the car. Really? Travelling all around those areas and, until I decided to move to Brisbane. Uh, I was still an apprentice at that time, and I based myself there for a couple of years, moved to Sydney for a couple of years. I was quite successful at the time, so it was easy for, for me to get a lot of rides, and I was just getting in the car and driving from race course to race course from day to day, uh, just doing what I loved, and so many different tracks, so many different jockeys to ride against. Uh, so I learned a lot, um, and uh, I'm sure it's helped me to, to, to become the rider I have. And how did the opportunity here present itself? What was the, the draw to commit across to Hong Kong? So I'd always seen that every jockey from Australia that had gone to Hong Kong had then moved back to Australia and they were a much better rider. They were sharper, they knew exactly what they were doing, they'd elevated themselves to the elite status. I just wanted to try and take myself to the next level and I thought uh, it was the right time for me to come, the right age. I'd been offered to come before that, but I didn't think I was ready. Yeah. And I know Hong Kong's a very intense place and uh, it can really chew you up if things aren't going well. So I just waited that little bit of time until I thought it was the right time. Uh, and then I come originally only thinking I was going to be here for six months and then I was going to take all that experience back to Australia and do my thing there. But I love the lifestyle, I love the racing, I love the culture um, and I'm, I'm still here. Zach Purton and Joe Marrera in a war of attrition to the wire. Joe Marrera arrived here and you've had a great rivalry with him. Did he really help to, to push you forward, given you've got someone who was right on your coattails? I think he did. He came here from South America, from Brazil, but he wasn't your typical South American rider. Uh, he had the attributes that you need to be able to be successful in Asia. So I was able to pick up a lot of things from him. He was just a naturally well-balanced, gifted rider, uh, very competitive, uh, very aggressive. Certainly helped make, make me a better rider. And did you enjoy that rivalry with him? Well, in the end, yeah, I did. When he first arrived, I wasn't enjoying it that much because I just got to the top and then <laughs> in come this tornado into town that everyone just wanted to put on. It was Marrera mania. And there was nothing I could do about it. I just had to sit back and cop it for, you know, however long it took for them to wear out of him. I get a little bit sick of him. Um, and then things started to even themselves up and then I was able to challenge him again. And, you know, we had a decade of, of, of battles back and forward and, you know, he had me at the start and in the middle it was fairly even and at the end I had him. So I think overall it sort of worked itself out, but um, physically and mentally he took a lot out of me. Well, Zach, we're here at the 2,000 metre start and we can see here this is a, a really short run into that first bend. So this is the worst start on the track, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, so many races are already won or lost by the time the barrier draw comes out. If you're drawn out, even midfield, it's really hard to get the right spot because the guys on the inside, they just want to be that little bit closer than what they normally would be because they're trying to take advantage of the short run at the first corner. And then sometimes they put a little bit too much speed into the race and then you draw out, you might have to go too far back and you've got to make a long sustained run. It's not only that, if, if you don't get to a position one off the fence by the time you hit that first corner, you're going all the way around the corner until 15, the 1500 metre mark 
until you might be able to get in. It's you, You've worked close to half the race by the time you get in. Your race is over, so uh, the barrier draws from this start are the most important of any, any position on this track. Norm Corr's run to the front for Zach Purden over Winbright and Magical, and Norm Corr won the cup. And we have to open the trade paper back home and we see the adverts for Hong Kong racing. It's your face that we see. You've become very much associated as one of the key faces of racing here. Does that give you a little bit of fame and notoriety, given how popular racing is around these areas? Yeah, well, there's, there's not a day goes by where I can't go anywhere down the streets here and someone really? wants a photo. You know, they're always saying hello, wishing me well, all those types of things. So uh, it's good. Uh, it makes you feel like you're, you're a part of the place. Um, makes you feel like you wanted. Um, but I've had that right from the first time I started. Even when i just arrived in Hong Kong, it didn't matter where I went, people would always say, oh, welcome to Hong Kong, hope you do well, blah, blah, blah. Obviously now they, they call me the champ and add oil and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> right? So <laughs> always support me, which is, which is nice. But uh, you go to the golf course and they're elbowing each other to get the bag out of the car. And, you know, it is what it is. You go to a restaurant, you get the best table. Um, you can always get a table. So there are, there are perks to it, but um, they're not intrusive because we're around town all the time, they see us all the time. Um, you know, they just say their little bit, get their photo and they're on their way. The mile start, the 600 metres. I thought this might be a, a more tricky start, but looking from where you start and the running you've got here, this is probably the, the fairest start on the track. This is the best start on the track and partly because of the long run that we have, um, but also partly because the milers also have a little bit of speed. So they come out the gates and some will show a little bit of speed and others won't. So it sort of sorts the field out quite comfortably um, as we gallop down towards that corner. And it's not a bad thing if you get caught three wide with cover either, if they back the speed off and the speed is not there. Because it's such a fair track and it's got that wide sweeping long bend, um, horses on the inside can get boxed in and horses that are sitting three wide with cover can just roll around and make their run. So inside gates from here, not always the best gates to draw. This is 100% pure Group 1 power. He is invincible, beauty generation. You've been a champion like six times here. Why do you think you've been so successful in Hong Kong during your career? I think you need to be resilient in this place. The club asks a lot of you, the stewards ask a lot of you, uh, the media ask a lot of you, the owners and the trainers are always under a lot of pressure and they ask a lot of you. It's like being thrown in the frying pan and you know, you're forever getting sizzled. So uh, mentally it's a very tough place. Um, you learn to grow a thick skin, you learn to block all the criticism out. At the end of the day, I sort of back myself to, to make the right decisions and give the horses their best chances. And if they win, they win. If they don't, they don't. Zach Purton, it's a second group one for him. Speechless, to be honest. We've come down the straight from the, the mile start, six furlongs. How key is the draw for this when we're closer to that bend? Yeah, so the barrier draws here are very important. Um, this is all speed. You know, the horses are fast. They jump from the gates. They're sharp. The quicker you can get your spot and get your horse into a rhythm and get it travelling, uh, the more he's going to be able to give you when you're asking him for the last 200 metres of the race. Victor, the winner leads. Lucky Swainess is wearing him down. He takes over. Lucky Swainess. And just turning our attentions to international racing, um, does the international scene still have a, an appeal and a, and a draw to you? Yeah, it does. I love travelling. I love uh, the experience of getting on a plane and going to new places and seeing different people and, you know, seeing the way that they do it. Royal Ascot was a great experience for me. Um, it's the only ride I've ever had there. I just keep telling everyone I'm undefeated, so <laughs> that might be why I haven't gone back. I don't want to ruin the record. But uh, we haven't found a horse good enough uh, to take back, but uh, maybe Lucky Swainess might be, might be that horse. It's Little Bridge for Hong Kong who leads the King Stand from Baited Breath. It's Little Bridge for Zach Purton. It's going to win for Danny Shum, the King Stand for Hong Kong. The one race I'd like to win would be the Melbourne Cup, back in Australia for sure. Um, you know, I sort of grew up admiring that race and, and loving it, so that, that would be it. Um, but I, I would love to ride in an English derby. I'd love to ride in an arc, a Kentucky derby. They're amazing races and all completely different. Well, Zach, we're here by the winning post. I guess for any jockey based here, passing the jam post in front is where most people want to be. Of course, yeah, it's a great feeling when you hit the line first. And it's even better when you come back to the reception of the crowd. And obviously, you're way back in, you get back on the horse, and you come back out here for the photo. It's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place to be. 
Uh, it's probably my favourite time, you know, being involved in all of that. So. And if you look at the grandstand, it's huge. It goes right the way down the, the stretch of the track. I mean, do you really get feedback from the crowd once you swing off that final bend? It's funny, when you're, when you're in the moment, you're probably in the bubble, or you're in the zone, you don't tend to notice the crowd that much. Uh, you're focused on what you're doing, and it's only if you happen to go sort of a couple of lengths clear or you're getting closer to the winning post and you can relax a little bit that, you know, those senses start to come back a little bit. But um, when you're fighting out that finish, you, you don't really hear the crowd. So you've been here for, for quite some time now. What do you think the, the future holds for Zach Person? I don't know, really. Um, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy living here. I enjoy the racing here. Uh, so while I continue to get support and keep having success, then, you know, this is, this is home for now. But uh, I'll never say never. There's, you know, an opportunity might come along. I might, might, might want to go home. So, uh, yeah, I'll just float along. I'm pretty happy and content with the way things have gone and the way things are, but uh, there's still a little bit more unfinished business to do, so I've got to, uh, got to keep my head down and work hard.